Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have a collab for Hate to Love or Rivals to Lovers Romance Recommendations. So yes, this is a collab with a bunch of other booktubers. I'll link everybody down below. Be sure to go check out all their videos. I'm very excited to go watch them. But yes, today we're going to be talking about Hate to Love or Rivals to Lovers. Rivals to Lovers is a fantastic trope. I have two other recommendations on my channel if you want to go check those out. Um, but without further ado, here are 10 more recommendations. First one that I have is the first book in the Brutal Birthright series. This is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. So Ada and Cat Callum are two main characters in here and they do not like each other like at all. They come from rivaling mafia families, I believe in Chicago if I'm not mistaken, they live in Chicago. And Ada and her brothers decide to basically crash Callum's sister's birthday party and she accidentally sets fire to one of the rooms in their house. To basically resolve this issue, their parents decide let's just make them get married because we don't want to have a war with each other. Let's just have them get married. These two characters get in an arranged marriage, forced marriage, if you will, <laughs> between to basically make an alliance between their families and to prevent mafia war with each other. They really despise one another. There's also like an age difference between the two. So Callum, think that a Callum thinks that Ada is too young to be his wife and it thinks that she's immature and Ada just can't stand like goody two shoes Callum. So um, she even tries to like <laughs> kill him on their wedding day. She like knows he's allergic to strawberries. So she puts on, I think like strawberry lip gloss or something before the wedding. And so when they kiss during the ceremony, he's gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> so like, there's like a few like tricks like that uh, through their marriage, which is quite funny at times, even though they're literally trying to kill each other because they don't like each other. Like imagine trying to kill your spouse because like you don't get along. So this one I feel like is like the epitome of a rival to lovers romance. And I love how like they still don't like each other even though their families are trying to like become friends. They're just like, no, I don't like you still. <laughs> Next I have the Landon and Shay duet by Brittany Cherry, more so book one than book two. So. The duet takes place in like two different timelines. So book one is about Landon and Shay when they're in high school and they fall in love with each other for the first time. And then book two in the duet is a second chance romance with them reconnecting years later after they had to end things in high school. The high school set one, book number one, I absolutely adore. They're very well known throughout the school, like not liking each other. They're not like, they don't sit with each other. They have like mutual friends, but they just, they don't get along. They get on each other's nerves. Landon is not the nicest to Shay. And Landon thinks that Shay judges him when she, she doesn't. Shay also walked in on him like crying after his uncle died and tried to comfort him and he was very embarrassed by it. And he kind of like takes it out on her. And Shay overhears a bet that Landon makes. He basically bets his friends like, oh, I bet I can make Shay fall in love with me. Like no problem. Um, and so she overhears this and is like, you know what? I bet I can make you fall in love with me first. You're on. And so they try to make the other person fall in love with each other throughout this book. <laughs> and they may or may not succeed. <laughs> Another contemporary romance is Everything For You by Chloe Elise. And I will say some of these like rivals to lovers hate to love romances. Um, they hate is sometimes more emphasized on one of the characters than the others. <laughs> so Gavin in here, our older character, he definitely has more of a disdain towards Oliver than Oliver does for him. So um, growing up, Oliver actually kind of idolized Gavin because Gavin's a few years older than him. And so he is a professional soccer player before he was. He had literally like posters of him on his wall and like idolized him and was like, I want to be like him when I grow up. And then when he grows up, he ends up being on the same professional soccer team as his idol. And then when he finally like meets his lifelong idol that he's idolized his whole life like he realizes that he is the grumpiest of grumps like ever and is not the nicest towards him and it's honestly because gavin doesn't like oliver because he's jealous of him like oliver is this fresh new young face with a body that doesn't hurt him when he runs like gavin deals with a lot of chronic pain because he's been in this sport for quite a few years and his body's basically rebelling against him so he's very jealous of Oliver. The coach of their team basically says like, how about this year y'all are gonna become co-captains instead of just Gavin being the captain by himself. At the beginning of this book, Oliver doesn't really like Gavin because he is so mean to him. So it is like hate to love, like 
animosity to lovers. Next we have one of my favorite books of all time which is When She Belongs by Ruby Dixon. I've talked about this book all the time so I'll keep it short and sweet but this is about Sophie and Jurok. Um, Sophie is a human refugee. She was a human slave in the alien universe and these three alien brothers end up saving her but they want to go on a treasure hunt and are like it's kind of dangerous to bring this human along with us so we're gonna drop her off at our friend's abandoned asteroid he lives there by himself they end up dropping her off at the asteroid with her like alien pet and jurok the jerk <laughs> jurok the grump is not very happy about this he just wants to live on his abandoned asteroid all by himself and he does not like sophie like she just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking he's like will you leave me alone i just want to be alone like for the rest of my life, I just wanna be alone. And then Sophie does not like Jurok at first because he's Jurok the jerk for a reason. <laughs> I adore this one. If you want like the best alien romance ever, like you have to pick this one up. If you're wanting a historical, I recommend Shameless Duke by Scarlett Scott. This is book four in the League of Duke series, but all these books can be read as standalones. The commonality is like, these uh, Dukes are also working as like detectives to figure out um, who these Fenians are trying it to take down and like ruin like the English government I think and so they're trying to make sure like to keep the people in the country safe because some of these Finians are like making bombs and terrorizing people so they're trying to find out who these people are to save their people like their English people. Lucian is our hero in this book and in the previous book in the series like he did something not so great and so the home office is not very like happy with him so they give him a partner I'm like a partner detective and he's never had a partner before so he's kind of like butthurt about this he was like i don't need a partner i don't need a babysitter like i can do all this by myself and then he finds out that his partner is a woman her name is hazel and she's actually from america and she's been a detective in america for the past 10 years and she goes to england to have this opportunity basically and they do not get off on the right foot they do not like each other at all but the banter between the two of them a freaking bless. I love it. Like all Hazel wants to do is her new hired job and Lucian thinks that he doesn't need a partner so they just keep clashing but then they have to come together in order to like um take down this group of terrorists essentially. I love this one. I love this series. If you need to pick up a Scarlet Scott with a great enemies to lovers, hate to love trope, definitely pick this one up. Another historical is A Reckless Match by Kate Bateman. This is a rival's family to lovers romance. So our hero and heroine in this book, they are Griff and Maddie, right? So Griff and Maddie are from rivaling families who have like estates or properties like next door to each other. And they've been fighting over this piece of land for like generations and years. And the king of the land is basically like, okay, since you keep fighting over it, like no one's gonna have it. Um, you're going to go to the land every year, I think. I think so, every year at this certain time on the dot and shake hands, the land is just gonna be void, like nobody's. But if one year, like someone from their respective families like doesn't show up, whoever does show up, like they get that land for like the rest of time, like they forfeit the land basically. So the heroine and the hero are from the rivaling families and they have been chosen this year to go shake hands on this property. And they have not liked each other <laughs> for quite a long time, but they haven't seen each other in a bit because Griff has been off at war and he's just now come back. When they finally shake hands, they just like, it's like they never left each other. Like they just get back into the bantering swing of things of like bickering with one another. It's so stinking cute. And something happens to the two of them where they have to solve this mystery of sorts. It's really fun. I obviously would love to mention The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. So book two in the Bridgerton series. This one's about Anthony and Kate. If you know about the Bridgertons, you know. So Anthony in here is wanting a wife, but not wanting to fall in love with her. He just wants a well-respected titled woman to carry on the Bridgerton name. He ends up across basically kind of like the diamond of the season, but he ends up accidentally falling in love with her older sister, Kate instead and they do not get along like he does not want to fall in love with this woman she bugs him to no end like they they cannot stand the other person but um that hate gets channeled into maybe some lustful ways though i do quick i had to quickly mention this because like it's like the epitome of a hate love romance another historical this trope is very apparent in historicals is duchess of my heart by maya banks so a heroine in here has been married to this horrible abusive man for years um but then he finally dies and she's like 
finally I get to go live my own life as a widow. Back in the olden days when a family member died, you had to be in a period of mourning where like for three years you can't like get married or something. I don't know if that's the correct amount of years, but basically like you have to wear black and you can't get married or can't like be courted by other people for like three years or something like that, like after your husband dies. But the heroine doesn't care. She's like, I owe nothing to my dead husband. He was absolutely awful to me. So I don't care. So she ends up going to balls and parties and these elaborate, beautiful gowns and dresses. And she just becomes the spectacle of the ton, causes a lot of scandal. Her best friend is this guy who is a titled man. I think he's the brother of a Duke. Yeah, he's the brother of a Duke. And his brother, who is the Duke, ends up catching one that he has been spending time with this very scandalous woman. And it's like, not on my watch, my brother's not gonna be roped into a woman like that. And so he ends up trying to convince this woman to stay away from his brother. On his way to find this woman, he ends up across this heroine, actually not knowing that it's the heroine, and ends up talking to her and having a conversation with her and just becomes like utterly entranced by her. And then figures out later that's the same woman that his brother is friends with and he's like oh no 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 and so it's between the duke it's a romance between the duke and this scandalous heroine it's definitely one of my banks like underrated reads because it's not like a highlander romance it's set in london there's a very large london setting in this one one of my favorite ones that i just love is how to capture a countess by karen hawkins this one is so underrated i wish more people read it because I absolutely love this one. So our hero and heroine end up meeting at like a ball. Um, I think it's like her first like outing into society at this ball. Um, I think she's like young, youngish, and the hero is way older and he is a count, right? And they end up talking and stuff like outside, they're having conversations and um, outside of this ball. And I think she ends up pushing him into the fountain that's on the property in front of like everybody and it causes like a scandal. He has this like nickname now um, because he fell in the, in the fountain and he's like so pissed at this girl for pushing him into this fountain. He's like, it's my lifelong goal to find this woman because she runs off after he falls into the fountain to find her and track her down and to make her life miserable. Like I, like she ruined my life. Like <laughs> he thinks that because this one pushed him into a fountain, like she ruined his life. And so he does not like her. He ends up fighting her a few years later and wants basically justice for what she did to him. And they end up meeting up again at this house party that is uh, run by um, a duchess who just happens to be the heroine's godmother. And he's just like, oh my gosh, it's you. I gotta get you back. So <laughs> It's really funny and fun. I love this book. And the last one that I would love to mention is Married by Morning by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number four in the Hathaway series, one of the bestest drunk romance series. I love this series. Um, but this is the romance between Kat and Leo. I also want to mention, I just got this copy. I found it while I was um, in Dallas and I finally have the step back version. Like, yes. Okay, I just had to show that off. So. Um, Leo is the only guy in the Hathaway family, so he's the heir. He needs to find a wife to marry and continue on the line. But as you've read throughout the series, like Leo was in love with like his childhood crush and she ended up passing away from an illness and he almost died from that illness as well. And so he's been going through the motions with like grief and stuff throughout the series. But at the beginning of this book, like he is finally become like his own man. He's very solid in his foundation on who he wants to be and he's dealt with his grief. And he loves poking fun at and bothering his sister's governess, Catherine. She's more so like their paid companion now um, because like the girls have like grown up um, and they don't really need a governess anymore, but they want Catherine to like still be around them. So she's like a companion now to them. She does not like Leo. She does not. She finds him very arrogant and just ridiculous at times. They're constantly arguing and bickering with each other, but she is left shocked when like one of their screening matches on each other ends with a very, very passionate kiss. Leo ends up proposing a little bit of a scandalous, dangerous tryst between the two of them that just causes a little bit of scandal, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, I love this one. I love this series. I definitely recommend if you haven't read this one yet or this series yet, please do. Anyway, so you have it. Those were 10 romance recommendations that are hate to love or rivals to lovers. Be sure to go check out all my friends' videos 
Again, their channels are going to be linked down below for you to go check out. Also, let me know what your favorite hate to love or rivals to lovers romances are. I would love to know. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. Let's see. Let's do some any kind of water emoji because from how to capture a countess, like she pushes him into a fountain. Is there a fountain emoji? I don't know, I have to look that up, but any kind of water emoji would be great. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.